witnesses you most want to hear from as a prosecutor are the people who had access to a defendant and to whom the defendant may have confided in. Mark Meadows, for instance, rings that bell. He was around the former president throughout January 6th. Very important to have his testimony. I think in some ways we can measure the importance of these January 6th witnesses by how vigorously they've tried to fight against having to testify after uh, uh, under oath. That in many ways seems to be a good benchmark um, for the importance of their testimony to prosecutors. But in both this case and as Lisa was discussing with the possibility that there could be new cooperating witnesses in Manhattan, the reality that we have to accept is we don't know what the charges will be, what the cases will look like, and how strong they are until prosecutors actually file them. That's a little bit frustrating, frankly, for all of us in the public. Mm -hmm. We are seeing, I think, just the tip of the iceberg as prosecutors bring their investigations to a close. It's a frustrating, it's a difficult time as we think about what's going on in Waco tonight and the fact that the former president is still free to engage in that sort of conduct. With access to these kinds of witnesses this, this late in these investigations, it looks like that may now be drawing to a close. Lisa, there was a, a wrinkle in in one of the stories we were following last week, and I, I didn't want to gloss over it. You wrote about it on MSNBC.com, and that was that Trump's lawyer, Evan Corcoran, just spoke to a grand jury in the Mar-a-Lago documents case. Why didn't Trump appeal and try to stop that from happening? You know, again, this is my speculation, but I think there are others in the legal community who would agree. One reason that Trump might not have appealed and asked for a stay from the Supreme Court, which is the next place he would have gone, isn't just because he would have lost. It's because given what was at issue, which is penetrating the attorney-client privilege to see documents and hear about communications between Trump and his lawyer, Evan Corcoran, that would have entailed sharing at least Beryl Howell's opinion with the Supreme Court and likely some of the evidence that she reviewed in camera in her chambers by herself. And if you're Donald Trump and the Supreme Court is going to be your last best hope to get out of one or more of these investigations that matures into prosecutions, you don't want to essentially prejudice the Supreme Court against you now by showing them evidence of what one federal judge has already called your criminal scheme. Hmm. Hmm. You know, Fernand, I'm listening to all of this great legal analysis, and I come back to the political point that Republicans are trying to make, uh, specifically Trump allies, saying that this indictment, that an indictment in general in any of the number of cases that we're talking about, will boost his chances of reelection. Your thoughts? Well, you've put your finger on it, Alicia. The most disturbing news of all of this, looking at it from that political lens and when it comes to the lens of public opinion and polling, is that since the news has come out that Trump is on the brink of potentially multiple indictments for laws that he broke before the eyes of the world, his standing on the Republican side has only grown. He's, ex in fact, expanded his lead significantly over Ron DeSantis, his only real challenger to the Republican nomination. And I think it harkens back to a point that uh, Joyce Vance made earlier. We don't know what the prosecutorial implications will be if an indictment comes down. We suspect it will. But we also don't know what's going to happen if those indictments happen from the political perspective. One can only hope that indictments are not good for former presidents. It's never happened before. And the fact that uh, so much of what he did is, all, you know, is evidenced in the public realm, as that's relitigated, that will hurt him. But frankly, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Trump really is on a glide path to winning the 2024 nomination. His campaign has openly said they are going full speed ahead, however many indictments come down. And uh, nothing prevents him from running for president with that being the case. So, you know, strap yourselves in, America. It's going to be another bumpy ride for the next 18 months. Fernand, as your podcast name suggests, strange days indeed. <laughs>